Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you so much for downloading or streaming the Be Our Guest podcast. Wherever the show finds you, I hope you are having a great week. Today, Pam Forrester joins me and we take your listener questions, of course, because it's Wednesday and that's what we do. One show shy of 2,500. So thanks for being on this journey with us. We appreciate you so very much. Today, we get a question from Nichelle in the live chat. She was on YouTube with us. And she asked questions about back-to-back cruises with Disney Cruise Line. Specifically, do you have to leave your stateroom? Can you leave your stateroom packed on your first cruise? So uh, you just you can come back in for your second cruise if you're doing back-to-back and just jump in and get right going on your second cruise. So we talk about that. And we have a discussion on why back-to-back cruises are pretty awesome. Some advantages and disadvantages to doing that. We ask you some questions about the 2024 discounts for the remainder of the year at Walt Disney World. We talk about that and a really interesting question about logistics of uh, stroller etiquette when it comes to Walt Disney World transportation. So what do you need to think of when it comes to being polite and prepared when it comes to your stroller at Walt Disney World, especially around transportation? So we have that discussion and much more on today's show. Don't forget our podcast, always brought to you by The Magic for Less Travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney adventure for no additional cost to you. Check out all the details today over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link when you shop online. One extra click supports everything we do throughout the year. Be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you so much for your support of the Be Our Guest Podcast on Patreon. You can support us just $5 a month and you'll get our bonus show. It's called Mike in the Midwest. Come over this week, and thanks to everybody who already supports the show. We appreciate you so much. Patreon.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Ready to take a trip to the world? You found the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. This is where your memories come front and center on our podcast stage. Welcome to episode 2,499 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at The Magic for Less Travel. Happy Wednesday to you. Hope you're having a great week. Today, we are here to answer your listener questions as we do each and every Wednesday. And of course, to keep you entertained and informed with everything Disney in today. I'm doing this with one of my best friends in the world. She's the co-owner of the Magic for Less Travel and your favorite Pittsburgher. We have Pam Forrester. What's going on, Pam? Happy Wednesday. (laughs) Happy Wednesday. So Pittsburgher. Is that how you say it? I don't even know. It's like a sandwich. Dude, whatever. Permantes and Pittsburghers. I mean, two great things. (laughs) I know. So um, happy Wednesday, everyone. Looking forward to doing another podcast and um apparently we're coming up very soon on 2500 <laughs> well we we're talking about this in the pre-show before we started recording typical um be our guest podcast style we're going to kind of backdoor into 2500 it's going to be tomorrow's episode which we recorded on sunday night it's a replay so it's not even going to be a huge celebration it's in the can we recorded scott and i sunday night by accident because it's a replay so uh, yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have some kind of a big twenty five hundred episode celebration at like twenty five twenty five or something down the road. I picture us not like coming in the back door, like coming in like you know how like Kramer rolls into Seinfeld's apartments, <laughs> or like uh, like not even sure how he got there. Right. That's sort of what's happening here. Exactly. I don't even watch Seinfeld, but I've seen that online. So they at least I can appreciate that because I've seen just like how he just kind of explodes into a room. I can take that. Yes. 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 Come, come, as they say, we're going to come in hot when you don't expect yes. it. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, what? Do you, what's uh, real quick? And, and, you know, we don't have to make this, uh, you know, we love Ricky. She's not here today because uh, apparently it's the end of the, the it's busy time with taxes and, and the baby situation. Because, you know, Ricky's a new mom still. I mean, sure. you know, I don't think that uh, baby Lucy's got a driver's license yet. I don't think she's self-sufficient quite yet. Um, even though by the time she's three, she'll think she is, uh, (laughs) wait till she gets to the terrible twos and threes and all that stuff. I can't wait. That'll be funny. Um, (laughs) I'm kind of like the mean uncle, but, um, what's going on with you? Like as far as trips, you're headed down to some cool, uh, stuff here in the next little bit, right? No. Yeah. So I'll be on the magic and we are 
going to be some of the first to check out Lighthouse Point. Um, the first stop there. Lookout Point. Look. Uh, okay, seriously. Disney, please help me dude, out. I know. Dude, it's so good. Let's Why do they do this stuff? I agree. Easy. And what are the, so what are the, because it's all about acronyms with Disney, right? So give us, what are the acronyms going to be for this? That's what I'm I don't know, about. but I'm going to say LP? if I ever run for president, I'm going to say, let's make names simple again. No, it's That's going to be my slogan. And, and no freestyle Coke machines, for real. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. So looking forward to that. Can't wait to see it. Um, and then we'll be experiencing, after that, we'll be experiencing Tiana's new attraction there at the Magic Kingdom. And I'm, you know, of course the preview is out there. Disney actually released a ride through itself, I think, to get a jump on other folks, right? Who that was our do it. Sunday <laughs> night. That was the, that was my hot take on Sunday night's live call right? show. I'm like, Disney, here, real quick, here was my take on this. I felt like I was Jake Paul in the ring with Mike Tyson because I'm trying to stay spoiler free on this sucker till I actually get right. to get down there. And I'm not going to get down there right away. And I'm dude, my thumbs have blisters on them over the last like 48 hours. Every time I would see a video come, I, these are Disney release videos. I'm like, right. Disney, why are you trying to spoil me every 17 seconds on social media? Knock it off. I mean, come on. Now. It's true. It's true. So um, I've only, like you, I'm trying to stay spoiler free until I get to experience it myself. Um, but I, of course I caught, you know, some fleeting moments yeah. and the, an the animatronics on this look so good. Yes. Like there's this, uh, uh, there was one of the sections I saw was Tiana and she looked it looked like an actor was there playing that. So um, it looks like it really sort of took some of the great aspects of that attraction that were there when it was Splash Mountain. And then um, it sort of, um, sort of, you know, I think plus that, I think we can say that. The only thing is, and this is like my own daughter, she's like, I heard they took the boat out at the end. I'm like, okay, Han, thank you for that. Dude, spoiler, <laughs> Hannah, knock, and, and I, I just had to ban one of our listeners, John Luther. He just said, I heard this big drop into the water at the end. <laughs> Banned! I just banned it. You guys are terrible. I'm banning right. people left and right. <laughs> so anyways, I'm looking forward to the attraction. Um, there's going to be a camera mount on our boat, Mike. Remember when you did that? Oh, the seven the drawers seven like drawers right at you? Yeah, the Gabe can, I called it, because yes. Gabe from, uh, from yes. uh, Good Luck Charlie was on before me. Yeah. Right. They'll get to see um, my <laughs> true reaction. So anyways, I'm so looking forward to that. There will be screaming at the end. I mean, in a good way. I'm not afraid of it. But of course, that drop is significant. When you get to the top and you look down, you're like for a moment, huh, here it is, the big drop. But anyways, looking forward to it. So glad that we're having another blockbuster attraction opening up for the summer and lots of good stuff going on this summer. I was just thinking I'm really craving a trip to just enjoy some pool time. Um, Amen. So, oh. I know, right? You feel, oh, I feel you. I feel you. I know. That. I know. Wait. It's like, pretend you're at a really nice community pool that has drinks and food yes. that can be brought to you. I mean, there's something to be said for that. And a so. gurgling suitcase. That's what a I'm gurgling doing. suitcase. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, do you remember when we used to have a co-host who was scared of uh, that hill on Splash Mountain? Or back in well, Splash Mountain, that's to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago, uh, yes. but that just brought that memory to me. Okay. So yes. um, that that's for the OG folks had been with us a long time. 90% of our audience is like, what are you talking about? What? The same. You had, to be, you had to be here a long time ago. That's a shout out to the 10% that have been with us forever. You're old, by the way. Um, so uh, real quick, right? Something else I was going to say that you brought up, but I totally just, because again, old, I totally just forgot it because we're so old at this point. Mid -sentence. I can't, it'll come back. Maybe, probably not. All right, so let's get to the first question while I try to ponder what I just forgot. Nichelle, who uh, we begged for a question, she has one. When you do a double dip, which if you don't know, a double dip would be a back-to-back, -back, I guess she's... Well, I guess she's... A double dip is usually a double dip is referred to as uh, going to uh, Castaway Key twice in one sailing is usually what I call a double dip. But I'm, I think she's talking about back-to-back, -back possibly. I agree, yes. When, when you do a back-to-back -back cruise and you have the same stateroom on both cruises, do they make you pack up your room or can we leave our things? Pam Forrester, I'm sure you've done one of these, right? 
<laughs> um, yes, they um, do not make you pack up your things, but they do make you get off the ship. They make you get so, out. So I know, right? Um, but no, th- <laughs> when we've been, when we have done it, they have let oh, they have let us leave all of our stuff in the room, not make us pack up anything, um, and then they sort of backdoored us off the ship and right back on the ship. It has something to do with customs and getting on and off and all of that stuff. Um, but they made it super, super easy. And it's so fun to do back to back. And people might say, well, why would you do that? Well, the reason is typically um, you'll get to do a seven night cruise, right? Um, with a four and a three. And you'll typically get to experience Castaway Key twice. Or who knows with the now with now the new island what that will look at like um, in that respect. And I think there's a benefit too to getting to experience the same sort of uh, restaurant rotations, both cruises. There's a lot of pluses for a back to back, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. What do you, how do you feel about the back to back? I I agree too. What it does is it takes the urgency from the first cruise out of the picture right because i think it it does gives you seven night cruise and it gives you so for example on the whether the three night or the four nights the first cruise when you go to castaway key on the first cruise you don't feel like you're not stressed right we're coming back because i mean this happens like because we've done with the podcast cruise we've done five night cruises where we've stopped at castaway key twice we've done that a couple of different podcast cruises and the thing was, it was so relaxing both days on Castaway Key because the first day we knew we were coming back. The second day we had already been there. So we'd done a lot, you know, we'd parasailed the first day and the second day we just hung out at the beach or we just, you know, whatever, rented bikes. So you had, you just, again, it's just like at Walt Disney World, right? When you have the luxury of time, you, you can relax and actually be on vacation. It wasn't so intense. And like you said, going to each restaurant in the rotational dining two times plus is way better than going one time. You know, you just, you get to, you get, and you get to have more time with a wait staff. You, I don't know if you have the same, cause I haven't done it with Disney cruise line, but I don't know if you have the same wait staff. I guess you could request it. D- did you For have sure. that? Um, yeah, I think we did have the same wait staff, but, um, I, and I think that they, Disney arranged that for us, but I think the other plus is too, you can do the specialty dining a couple times right. if you'd like. It gives you more opportunities to see the shows. It gives you more opportunities to see any special activities that are going on. There's usually like a, a special activity that goes on your last night and this way you get two chances to do it. So I think uh, like you, I think one of the biggest bonuses of that is it gives you just a double opportunity to do a lot of things and it does remove some of that stress. It definitely does. It's different than a seven night cruise because the seven night cruise, you're going to have different things each day, Mm -hmm. right? But this sort of gives you an opportunity to experience a lot of those things twice. And since you know, and I know there's no way you're going to do it all on a cruise, this gives you more of a chance to do that. And plus what I would do too, real quick, because I mean, she's in the shell's, kind of you know debating whether to do this you know what i would do is maybe decide say i don't know what the shows are on these three and four night cruises but say like believe is showing obviously on both cruises which it probably is on on the wish say on the three and four nights i would pick one of those out and go to the show one of the two cruises and the other night i would make it where i stroll on deck and watch the sunset you know what i'm saying and like Mm -hmm. because that is because most of the ship is in the show or at dinner in that ship, like during the show and dinner time, if you go up to the top deck, it's abandoned. Nobody's up there because everybody's either in the show or dinner. Grab a drink, walk with your significant other, just walk in by yourself and watch the sunset from up on deck 10, deck 11, you know, find your spot on your veranda, whatever it is. I mean, that's I've done that a few times where I've just skipped the show and just taken it, you know, just let nature, you know, just watch the ocean, watch the sunset. And you know what? Sometimes that's even better than the show. The shows are amazing. But I've never regretted doing that. I haven't done it a lot, but when I've done it, I've loved it. And that gives you a chance to do things like that because you've already seen the show. So it something does. to think about. Yeah. All right, let's see. We have a question here about uh, Eric. He's over on Twitch. Eric Matterhorn says, with a great Matterhorn icon here, with park hopping at all hours, can annual passes book Genie Plus for all parks first thing in the morning, even though they have to make reservations still? So how's that working out? Because I never use Genie Plus. Do you? 
Yeah, I do. Actually, I use it often. Um, and yes, as long as you have, uh, so when you buy Genie Plus now, you have the option of buying it for just one park yep. or buying it for multiple parks, or you could buy two individual park Genie Plus. I, I know, right? Sometimes that's actually, if you're only going to be visiting two parks, sometimes purchasing it for two individual parks could be less than purchasing it for the multi park. So um, as long as you do that, then you will be able to go ahead and make Genie Plus arrangements um, and they take into consideration park hopping, so. All right, we have a question over on Instagram from Emily V says, and it says, hey, Mike and Pam, best cruise for a first time cruiser, four nighter? I would say yes, that's a good introductory cruise. I, I still think a three night cruise is too short. I would do the four. I think a three night cruise here, here's where I think the three, cause everybody's like, why is there a three night cruise then? Here's where I think the three night cruise, it works. I think it's for an experienced cruiser. That's just, it's fiending to get on a ship, but they only have a weekend. Like, mm -hmm. like you just like, God, I just missed that ship. And I know I can only go over the weekend. Like I just have a holiday weekend or something where it works out that the schedules all lot align. And it's fine. Like I'm going to be at Walt Disney world for like two or three days and I'm just going to squeeze in a little cruise. Like I know it's going to be quick, but I've sailed a few times and I just want to get into, you know, get into a couple of shows, dining, you know, sit on a veranda and go to Castaway Key. I'm cool with it. I've sailed it. I just need three nights. It's cool. But if for a first time, I do a four night to the Bahamas, get a good taste of it, get a sea day. Cause I'm telling you the sea days are it, it, it until you do it. You don't understand it. But sea days are my favorite, even over Castaway Key. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, I love the sea days too. And I think some of that has to do with a Palo brunch. Um, oh, yes, <laughs> like 98%, but go ahead. <laughs> Plus, it just seems like a really relaxing day. You don't have to get up and go somewhere unless you want to, right? And and if you're going to go somewhere, where you're going to go is maybe out on the pool deck or to do activities that they're going to be offering or whatnot. So, um, yeah, I absolutely enjoy a sea day, but I also agree with you, Mike, there are absolutely times where I'm like, okay, we really can't take a whole week, uh, you mm -hmm. know, to go do a cruise, but we have these three nights that are going to work for us. So we're going to jump on the ship and go, and we know exactly what we're getting into. We don't have the steeper learning curve of having to learn the ship or having to figure out what we want to do. We already know what we want to do. Um, yes, we want to spend every evening in palo or yep. something but i think it is really for the veteran cruiser the three-nighter it it's is. just it's like just it i just is. need a little hit of disney cruise line in my life right now it is for sure and i think for those who are worried about cruising i think a four night is a good um taster cruise for them i will say you know my husband was actually really reluctant before we went on our first cruise way back when um he was like, there's not going to be enough for me to do. I'm going to get bored. Da, 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 da. And then we got on the ship and he was like, oh, yeah. Um, so what's so funny is I think so many people feel like a Walt Disney World um, vacation sort of lets you disconnect or a Disneyland vacation lets you disconnect. Uh, a cruise lets you disconnect in a way that's not possible on other vacations and just by virtue of being a cruise. So um, I think that's one of the things that most people find that they love the most about a cruise. And then when you do a four night, you're going to get a good taste of that. I miss cruising with Steve Forrester. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing better. All right. Cheshire Disney Danny over on Instagram says, Hey, Mike and Pam Disneyland question. We'll be at the Halloween races. We have six days. One is an Oogie Boogie day. <laughs> I just like saying that. That's great. Boogie, boogie. I love you got to have context here. And one is the expo day. What is your opinion? Is it worth buying tickets for those days? So should they buy, I guess, theme park tickets to Disneyland and DCA on the days of the Oogie Boogie dash, Oogie Boogie party? Oogie Boogie Dash. What are going with Dash? <laughs> Oogie, Boogie, D Oogie Boogie Party Day and the Expo Day. So I would, I mean, yes, I would definitely buy tickets to the Expo Day. That does not take that long. I mean, because the Expo is right there. Um, I was going to say a five day is probably yeah, good. So I would, buy I five. five. Yeah, I'd buy five. Because that's the most like you can get. 
Yeah, yeah. Really and I would do uh, like the Oogie Boogie Day. I probably wouldn't go in because it's going to be a later night for right. you and whatnot. And you'll probably be able to start getting it. I forget what time they let people in with the Oogie Boogie tickets into the park. But I want to say it was in the late afternoon. So you'll be able to go into the late afternoon there. I would go. I would enjoy my resort that day during the day, get some relaxing in and then head to the park that evening. And that would be my schedule. Oogie Boogie. How many times are we going to say Oogie Boogie in this show? Oogie Boogie. Just, Oogie Boogie. That's nice. <laughs> All right. Andrew's got a question. I like this question because this is a challenge for us because <laughs> it's been it's been a minute for us. But here we go. What would you say are the major bullet points for stroller etiquette for transportation and in the parks? Hmm. So here's It is a, a good question because, first of all, I will say I try very hard to show grace in this space. Same. Um, but I try because... and by by showing grace I try not to laugh because I was there <laughs> and I'm not anymore so I find it hilarious. Right. I know. And I will say too as young parents I remember being there with Hannah. We had a stroller that actually the concierge had given us, we were saying club level, and they had given us a stroller to use. And it was unfamiliar. We, it wasn't our typical stroller. And we were going to get on one of the boats. And dang, if I knew how to fold oh, okay. that stroller. It should be a game. Ugh. It should really be a game show. Like, for right? real. Like, like tick, 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 <laughs> tick. And you're cranking that thing down, you know? Like, oh my God, I think I have the clock here. <laughs> you know, uh, people in the boat or the whatever are looking at you. yes like here you are dad trying to you, here comes uh, the boat here comes the boat here comes nightmare. the boat crank crank nightmare, nightmare. oh you don't get on this bus <laughs> it's that and two people are always like i can't stand when a stroller ran into and i get it like not great but in a big crowd it is not easy to stop on a dime all the time. It just isn't. And even though you're looking ahead when the person in front of you stops or whatnot, I just try to show a lot of grace there because it's unfamiliar. Everyone, especially littles, have a hard time sometimes with the amount of everything that's going on around them. So I will say... Bullet points for the stroller etiquette is um, don't be like me. Learn how to fold your stroller, right? Because there are certain transportation options that you're going to have to do that with. And that will be the bus and the boats um, the trans uh, there at Walt Disney World. So know that. Um, I would say try to be mindful of how much space you're taking up and, you know, how much momentum you have behind the stroller, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I always try to apply the rules of skiing. When, when I learned to ski, they were like, if you are above the hill and coming down behind someone, it's up to you to navigate around. That is, I mean, that's like a, that's like a international skiing rule, right? When you're the uphill yes. skier that you have, you have the right away, right? Is it, and, but you no, also, you, you have the responsibility, have right? Cause you to avoid you yes, slower yeah, skiers or meant, people yes. who are stopped or anyone, whoever might be in front of you for whatever reason, you don't get to ask the person like, why are you on the ground? Like it is your responsibility to navigate around, right? If they're slower than you, you don't get to run them over, like all of those things. So I think maybe try to apply those kind of things. Um, and I will say too, I think a stroller, I will say the thing I miss the most about the stroller is it is a great receptacle. I knew you were going to say that. Yes. Drinks. Yes. The first, <laughs> the the first time your kid starts, like you make your kid walk, like, and you don't take the stroller. You're like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Right. Like you're like, oh, man, that thing had that, that. I put 10 pounds of stuff on this stroller. <laughs> Our first trip, I was like, where's my drink holder, shopping right. bag holder on wheels. Exactly. That I, used to have. Well, I felt like a homeless person, you know, like just pushing that. I'm like, I had a cart. It was crazy. <laughs> I know. I know. What are your big um, bullet points? Uh, I for mean, stroller I, I think it's common sense, right? And you just said it like it's grace, right? People don't, even if like at home, you know, when you're at the shopping mall, <laughs> people go to shopping malls. Anyway. Again, this is old. <laughs> But I mean, when Mallory was young, we used to always go to the shopping mall, but the shopping mall wasn't as densely populated as the Magic Kingdom after the fireworks, right? I mean, right. I wasn't 
you know, I, I prided myself on being a pretty good stroller driver back in the day, but it, I didn't have the level of intensity at the Mills Mall in Hazelwood, Missouri, as I did on Main Street USA at ten fifteen after Wishes. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that was that was like driving the Indy 500 compared to like back road Missouri Bottoms Road here in St. Louis. It was no comparison. It was wild. And so did I clip a few heels? Yes. Did I mean to? No, because half the time Mallory was kicking because she was mad because she was strapped in. And it was 10 o'clock at night. She should have been in bed. We're probably giving her sugar all day. I'm fighting with her. You know, she's kicking and screaming. And I'm like, stop. You know, and I'm not I'm trying to yell at her. You know, she's yelling at me. And the last thing I'm worried about is like, where I'm driving. I probably hit some grandma's heel. You know, I'm not trying to hit grandma's heel. I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to get out of the magic kingdom, people, just like you. And did I clip your heel? Yeah, I probably did. I didn't mean to. I'm, I'm, I'm a novice. You know, I don't have a license in this. So, again, it's grace. But. When you are getting on transportation, I think the whole thing is preparedness, right? It is, first of all, get all your junk out of the stroller because that's the whole thing. Like, because I think like people panic. What I've always seen is like, you know, if you don't like the butt, like all of a sudden you see, you see people like waiting there and their kids are in the stroller, right? And you're waiting in the, the pop century, corral, like bus corral, right? And here comes a pop century bus pulled in. Well, the kid's still in the stroller, you know, and the bus is pulling in, you know, you're going to make that bus. And that's like when the parent starts getting the kid out of the stroller. That's not the time. Like, because what happens at that point, dude, you've already lost the battle because the kid's going to fight all of a sudden and the stroller's loaded down with everything. So now what happens is the dad or mom gets in the panic mode. They start trying to fold that sucker up and all the popcorn buckets still in there and it's full of popcorn. They got sodas in there. They forgot what it was in the basket in the bottom. Soda spills, popcorn everywhere. Kid cries because there, there's stuff's everywhere. And it's just a wreck. Like it's all preparedness. Like you have a plan, yeah. get it done before any, before that bus even gets on the pop century property, fold that sucker up. Just be ready. Be like, and be a boy scout or with scouts, you know, be prepared, be ready. That's it too. And for the, um, the security checkpoint too, that's a great point too. Like be ready with your stroller when you go up there. Now we know there is a separate line for strollers, but even in that, please be ready. I will say I would love a, be prepared for the security checkpoint notice to go out to everybody. Like, Oh, like amen. Uh, Mike amen. and I have the same personality in this space. You roll up and these people act like you know this it's is coming. News I mean, but how do you not know? I mean, it, okay, if I like again, Grace, I do give Grace because I know I like th you know, I've been through that security thing a hundred thousand times, right? I understand. Yeah. So I mean, I know like I hold my battery, I hold my iPhone, if I have an umbrella, yeah. if Water I bottle. you know, my eyeglasses case because it's pretty dense, like it's thick because I yes. bl I'm blind and I have big glasses. So those things will every once in a while set off the thing. So I hold them up above my head or have they tell me out front, you know, so those things are out of my bag. Right. Like I am ready. Like I, I one thing I can do is I can follow directions. I was a teacher. I can follow direction, <laughs> but like, it, it, it's not hard. Like these people, most of them probably flew in an airplane. Like, I mean, you went through TSA. This is not even that hard. Like, dude, just get, it's really at Walt Disney world at this point. It's like going a single file line. Don't stop. That's all you got to do. I mean, I know. Come on. It's true. Anyway, it is true. <laughs> it is. I like when the security guy is trying to tell me which of the things set off the alarm. And I like, I don't ever say this, but I want to say, dude, this is the third park I've been in today. And this is the first time that whatever's in my bag right. set off know, whatever alarm you're getting that does, there. So. That does crack me up. Cause I'm like, yeah, why today? Why now? Like, why now? Dude, it's the same thing. I know. For, Day that, four. <laughs> I've had the same stuff in my bag. Every day, you, you just, just like turn it up on me today, just to mess with me. Like, what, what is going on here? All right, we got... we've all been there, Grace. But you have to laugh. Too. I know for real, dude. I think they just they just screw with us sometimes, just because they're bored. I told them because I would do that. Like when I, you know, if I was working there, I'd probably do it too. All right, Sarah says, "Hey, BOGP crew, any guesses on when Disney will drop the remaining twenty-four discounts of full year twenty twenty-five resort reservations for Walt Disney World?" Again, we never know for discounts if and when they could come out. They could come out at any time. They could never come out. It's all based on how Disney is seeing. And there is one out things. now until uh, December 21st. Yes. The Disney Visa card holder um, free dining is actually out 
through most of December, which is a rarity. We rarely see anything. Um, it's for arrivals most nights, July 1st through the 31st. And there are still some availability in those July dates. So check those out. September 1st through the 7th, which is a very short window in, De in September. And then December 9th through 21st. Um, those are available for 2024 this year, which is awesome. And I will say too, um, this was the good discount that we were going to see for those travel dates. And I think it is very telling that there's not much available the rest of September and also October. That typically means that they are already seeing higher occupancy during that time. Don't get panicked if you have a trip plan then. You're not going to see higher crowds. It just is a time when you see most of the resorts are busy. They have some conventions that come during that time and, and whatnot. So all things to keep in mind. Um, so whether we'll see other discounts for 2024 is really anyone's guess. Um, and 2025, we just don't have the full uh, calendar availability there. I don't know what the reason was for holding that back. We got it earlier than we've ever seen it before. We got it way early this year. Way yeah. early. Um, so I don't know if this will come out in traditional time that we usually see those sort of in the summer. I don't know if there's something being changed that will impact that point forward. It's always something to think about. So all those things, sorry, all that to say, we don't know. Yeah. Well, stay tuned. That's why we're here three times a week. Stay tuned. All right. Sandy's got a question. Any recommendations for a hotel near Fort Lauderdale cruise port since now the, you know, it's that's uh you know, uh, Disney cruise line, second port Fort Lauderdale. I know there's a lot of hotels in the area. I believe that Disney is recommending, um, like if you do a pre-cruise stay through Disney, they're saying there's a Hilton there. Um, what I would be looking for in a hotel in that space is first of all, you probably aren't going to find things that have, um, free shuttle from the airport and free shuttle to the cruise. That probably is not going to happen for you. I know that a lot of people look for those things. It's just sort of a rare bird in this space. What about free breakfast? Who cares from, about a shuttle? I know that people Who cares about a shuttle? I'm sorry. When you said free, I'm like, breakfast? Yes. <laughs> I know that other people are looking for that. The other thing I would want to be looking for is um, something that had restaurants near or in it that I could go to that night, especially if you're in um, an area that you're unfamiliar with. I think it's always good to have something kind of close that you can walk to in the evening. And I totally applaud. You know how much I like, Sandy, that you're flying in before your cruise because we have seen probably in the last couple years more cruises impacted by airline issues, by weather, by all those things, and by arriving at least a day early for your cruise, you will eliminate that being a possibility. I will share too that we um, even had a guest that was arriving a full day, if not two days early, and still because of their airline missed their cruise. Um, so it is a challenge. It's not exclusive to any one airline. Um, many airlines <laughs> experience it. So the one thing I will say is look at when booking your airline, when booking your air for a cruise, if you're looking at a, a one that is not one of the legacy airlines, um, see how often they fly to the destination that you're going to. Some of the cruise, some of the airlines only fly, let's say, I know that there's a um, airport near us in Latrobe that I believe Spirit flies from, but they only fly to those destinations. Once a week. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's like, we'll get you there next Tuesday. Like right. that won't work. My cruise will be back. Exactly. So it's just something to consider in that space. Oh my God. I was joking. But I know some, some airlines do that. that yeah, I'd, be, I'd be like, I'm out on that airline. I'm sorry. Right. I'm like, no. Cause like, that's why I, I fly Southwest out of St. Louis. They fly to Orlando eight or nine times a day. So right. like if I miss a flight, I mean, exactly. And, and Pam's like, why are we flying at five 30 in the morning? I'm like, a, it was super cheap. Like it was the absolute <laughs> cheapest flight. That's, that's 80% of the battle. But B, 
There's seven other opportunities to get down there on that Friday because we fly set or we cruise Saturday, right? Right. I mean, there's like other. So I told her, A, cheapest flight. That's 80%. Like, because the other flights are real, a lot more, not a lot more expensive. But when you're buying, you know, three, four flights, it adds up. But also, I want to get, we land at like 8 15 in the morning and we're staying in Old Key West. So, dude, all pool day, all day long. So I want to <laughs> get my money's worth if I'm staying in Old Key West. So that's a big part of it. But I mean, it's also that that in my the peace in my mind that if for some reason, and plus the first flight of the day, the plane's usually there, right? That's the least mm -hmm. opportunity to probably be delayed. We're probably yeah. going to get out at five thirty in the morning because in the Midwest you can get thunderstorms in the afternoon, and all kinds of stuff, and stuff backs up, right? If you have a thunder, you know, like in July, all bets are off with weather. I mean, your plane could be coming from Chicago, Chicago could have a thunderstorm, and you know, it could be coming from Pittsburgh or Detroit or what have you. It, probably we're going to get there on time with a five thirty a.m. flight. But it just if it doesn't, we have ample opportunity to get down that day by yep. night. So I do that, people that are going on cruises. Don't give me a heart attack, please. <laughs> exactly. You didn't even hear about Dennis, one of my good buddy who took a med cruise. He's on his med cruise right now over in the dream. He got in the wrong taxi, got detained by the police for 40 minutes in Spain before going to the port. Uh, uh. Oh, you can go to the Discord to read the whole story. He's on oh the ship. He did post on the Discord a picture of him and his wife having his sail away drinks on top of the oh, top deck dang. of the dream. So it's all good. But I can't wait to hear the story when he gets back. So yes, cruising has its adventures sometimes. And the, sure. good, the funny thing is, Paige has taken her basketball team to Barcelona right after for an exhibition tour. Right after we get back from our cruise, and I'm going to tell her, don't get into any taxis because they. <laughs> The police apparently don't speak English, and neither do you. <laughs> so don't, don't take a taxi. I don't know what you do, but just be careful. Okay, last question of the day. Let's get to it here from the inbox. It is from Kate. Uh, she is from Warren High School, apparently, and this is cool in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So hopefully she's out of school and enjoying her summer already. Hey, Mike and BOGP crew. My husband, two daughters who are eight and five, and I'll be embarking on the fantasy in mid-June keep it nice for me that's like two cruises in front of mine and we'll be staying at the animal kingdom lodge for two nights before our cruise we are let's see we snagged a bucket list savannah view room in kadani village as a surprise for my family my husband is not a disney guy but has often mentioned how cool it would be to stay at animal kingdom lodge specifically in a savannah view room i'm just here making dreams come true all over the place go me she says that's what teachers do, right? Your daughter's a teacher. That's They make dreams come true all over the place. Yes. That's what they do. That's awesome. A little sprinkle. I love this. That's so funny. I love Kate. That's awesome. We plan just to enjoy the resort and don't have any park days planned. I booked ADRs for Sanaa and one dinner at Boma for both breakfast and the other for dinner because I keep hearing amer uh, amazing reviews of both meals and we can't choose. So why not live very, very large? <laughs> as much as I love Jico, the beauty of uh, the beauty of the atmosphere and the excellence of the food will be lost on my little girls. So we'll save that for another time. My question is, the resort has so much to offer. What recommendations do you have for maximizing our time while also relaxing and taking it all in? As a bonus question, I would be up for hearing what you all love to do on DCL. This will be my third Disney cruise but there's always something new to learn. Thanks for your amazing podcast, Kate in Bowling Green, Kentucky. First of all, you are doing it, at, in my opinion, absolutely right. We're doing the exact same thing, say on the Fantasy, July 6th. We're going down the day before, no parks, pool day, Oki West, which I think is very comparable to, I mean, you know, it, it's a place where it's just a resort, right? Pool day, gurgling suitcase. We'll probably maybe take the, if the boats are running to Disney Springs, if not, we'll just catch a bus to Disney Springs for a little bit. I mean, just total, just having fun for one day and then going over to the cruise. I, I, I'm surprising the girls with a big limo. We got an SUV limo picking us up. They think it's the, they think it's the bus. I mean, they're, they're kind of, Mallory's kind of spoiled. She's going to, you know, she's always taking a limo, like bus thing over because of you guys, right? Because you always go with you guys, which like, she won't be surprised, but you know, her, her neat, her cousin will be. Anyway. <laughs> She'll be really, what she'll be shocked is we're just taking the motor coach back to the airport after the cruise. She'll be like, where's the limo for that? I'm like, cruise is over, get on the bus. Um, but here, so I like this Sanaa and Boma, good meals. I mean, just 
you know, as far as Animal Kingdom Lodge, the pools, I mean, seeing the animals, I mean, Pam, what do you, there's, I mean, just take it all in. Chill out. Yeah. You'll want to get one of the activities guides so you can see all of the activities that are happening. Dang, won't you be happy when those activities guides somehow make it to the app? I'm just. How they're not there. Crazy talk. How, how are they not there? I see. I, I don't understand how there's <laughs> like a tag. Do this, yeah. Take a picture and then upload it it's to the app hard. so you yeah. could click on it and expand it is it now 2024 out. i mean yeah come on <laughs> i know but anyway stop by the front desk or the concierge and they'll be able to give you a listing of those activities there's so many great things to do make sure you uh possibly look at the evening activities too you're going to want to hit the movies under the stars if they're there and of course some s'mores and campfire stuff that's always a really cool thing. Um, and at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, sometimes they have night vision goggles out there mm -hmm. to look at. They actually even have some tours of Animal Kingdom Lodge. So look at those too. Um, lots, I mean, just there's so many good things about the Animal Kingdom Lodge, I think, that are good. Are, it's, it's just one of the best resorts to so just it is. enjoy the they resort. Picked, they picked a great resort just to hang out for a couple of days. I mean, that's probably the best one. Um, moving on to the stars gets you ready for funnel vision. So you're like pre-gaming the, the cruise right there. You're preparing yourself. That's, you know, no C, no C error, but, uh, you know, there you go. Um, but a couple of things to do on, on the ship that maybe you haven't thought of. One of the things I've never done is the ship tour. I've never, and I'm platinum. I've done a bunch of cruises. I've been on all the ships. Uh, wow. Never done one of the ship tours. I'm doing that this time. So yeah, that's, that's a fun one. Yeah. I agree. They tell you little secrets about the ship. They sometimes talk about some of the artwork. Um, maybe they'll even show you, you know, where the ship was welded together. Um, that kind of thing. But yeah, and those cast members are super knowledgeable. So make sure if you have questions, you ask them as well. Lots of so many good things to do on the ship. Yeah, and I would just you know. With your family, I mean, you got two daughters that are eight and five. I mean, I'm sure you've this is your third cruise. You've probably already taken the opportunity to sign up for the princess meet and greet, which happens because uh, it looks like you're gonna be on the fantasies. So that's probably a seven night uh, Caribbean cruise. Uh, I think it happens twice during this during your sailing, where they'll want the mornings they'll they'll be down in the atrium, and you have that kind of opportunity to go right down the line and meet like Tiana and Cinderella and uh, probably it, they vary like Belle, Snow White and you get them kind of all just knocked out in a row. Of course, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique experiences on the, the fantasy. There's just, there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, the thing is if, if your girls are into character meet and greets characters, are, that's the thing about the cruise line. <laughs> you can meet 50 characters in a week easily with no work i mean the characters are everywhere in the ship so that's an opportunity to do that so bring something to autograph you know if they, yes. they want to pick those up anyway and happy end of your school year it's got to be a good yeah i miss that i do miss that i miss the last day of school all right well we're going to get out of here but we're going to be back on friday and we're taking a question from a suggestion actually from cindy lou 75 over in the bogp clubhouse our discord channel and we're going to talk quick service dining suggestions. So come hungry, come with a, you know, ready to, to, to notepad and paper. Actually, nobody does that anymore, but uh, your notes app on your mobile device, and we'll get you ready to, uh, to have some good meals, not table service meals, counter service meals down at Walt Disney world on Friday. So until then we want to catch you over in the clubhouse, be our guest podcast.com slash discord. It's great conversation and awesome community of all of our listeners and uh, we just talk Disney all the time, 24-7. We talk about life over there, too, sports and where we're all from and everything that's happening. So come on over and join us over there as well. Don't forget, our shows are always brought to you by The Magic for Less Travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney adventure. Whether you're headed out to the West Coast, Disneyland is awesome. You need to get out there and check out everything going out there. Pixar Fest, and you got the new Pixar Place Hotel. That is amazing. You got... The guy from Soul, Joe Gardner, playing the Tickle in the Ivories down there in the lobby. You could have that in your own. Come back to that after the parks. How cool would that be? The Disneyland Hotel, you cannot. I mean, I'm, I'm biased. Can't beat the Disneyland Hotel. It's amazing. You are biased. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. And it's just how it's going to be. <laughs> I love the Disneyland Hotel, man. It is oh, Frontier Tower, baby. A Fantasyland Tower is not bad either. But I like the Frontier Tower. 
it's where the workout room is. Uh, this is me. I, I my brain is warped. But, uh, you know, and then Scotty G is always Grand Californian, baby. So whatever. Pick your poison. It's You can't go wrong. So uh, you know, we'll get you out to Disneyland. Do I like the Disney Cruise Line? It's all I'm obsessed with right now. Fantasy, baby. July 6th. I'm ready. Let's go. And, of course, Adventures by Disney. You can see the world and have access that nobody else gets. So it's coming over to the website. All the details are there. No cost. To use our services. We'll, we'll uh, take care of you from that point on. So coming over. The Magic for Less. Dot com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link when you shop online. One extra click supports everything we do throughout the year. Be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. And a sincere thank you to our patrons. You guys make all this possible. The hosting with the videos, the audio hosting, the bandwidth. It takes a lot, but uh, you guys make it possible. So thank you for that. You can support us just $5 a month. And as a thank you, you get a bonus show every week. It's called Mike in the Midwest. This week we talked about, and the shows are always a little bit crazy, we talked about breakfast memories from my childhood, and we talked about favorite breakfast cereals, the crazy stuff my grandma used to make. It was called chipped beef on toast. I don't know if you guys had that where you grew up. My grandpa called it something inappropriate. We talk about that on the show. <laughs> it was served during the Great Depression, I learned. Uh, I, don't know, I read it on a website over the week, like an Apple News last week, and that's what brought up the show idea. So, Come on over, get the show. $5 a month supports us. Everybody wins. Sometimes you lose if you listen to the show, but it's it's all in fun. So come on over. It's patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. Give Pam a follow on the social media at TMFLT. Pam, I'm at be our guest, Mike. Of course, you got Scott at Ep Scott. You got Ricky at Ricky Nibs. And uh, we'll be back again on Friday. We'll have the live call and show, of course, Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central in all the places. All right, we'll see you again on Friday. So for Pam, I'm Mike, wishing you a great Wednesday. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. You've been listening to the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. If you have questions, comments, or would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you real soon.